What's going on YouTube? Flamesword here and I've been reading a lot of my comments lately in my motor vlogs. I've seen that many of you have become intrigued in pursuing a career in getting your motorcycle endorsements. So today I want to show everyone something that I wish I knew before I got my bike. A way to always avoid stalling. Now I mean stalling from stop to go. Now there are other ways to stall out. For example, say you're riding at 20 miles per hour, you come to a complete stop and you forget to hold down on the clutch. When you do come to that complete stop, your bike is going to stall out and you're going to restart it up. I think a lot of people don't know with the motorcycle and a manual shift car is that your foot always has to be on the clutch if you are in gear and at a stop. That is why for the most part when you see people in motovlogs or if you're learning how to ride a uh, manual shift car that everyone always throws it in the clutch and then puts it in neutral and lets go of the clutch and then from there all you need to do is have your foot on the brake with either a car or a motorcycle so what I'm gonna to do today is teach you guys from start to go how to always avoid stalling I'm gonna show you a little trick that like I said I wish I knew before I really jumped on the bike so I would feel a lot more comfortable before we get started we got to know that our clutch lever is the one on the left of our handlebars and our gear pattern is down here now on a motorcycle it's a lot different than a car where it goes one two three four five and six now for a motorcycle when you're all the way down you are in first gear when you slightly tap it from first gear up you will go into neutral now this is a bit of a tricky zone when you are a first rider it you kind of blow by it at times because you put too much pressure if you do have rider shoes with the steel toe boot for the most part you will see that it's a lot easier because then it's just a little tap the problem that i ran into when i first started riding was that from going to first to neutral i would skip neutral and go to second and vice versa from going second to first i would always miss neutral and just go straight back down to first and i would have to learn how to play around with it those are the only gears you're going to have to know for today for everything else after second gear and you just keep pushing this up after holding down your clutch lever you will continue going up in gears my bike has six gears so once i'm in second i go up three four five and six now this lever will always stay here when i say go up it doesn't mean this lever is going up it just means it's causing the gear pattern on the bike to shift up now what i want to do for you all today is learn how to move this thing from not moving to going forward now we're not going to go through any gears i did show you gears one and gears two or kind of how they work i'm not going to ever jump into gear number two as you can see right now my bike is in neutral that green sign is up with the letter n telling you that it is in neutral because of that no matter how much you rev the engine you're not going to go anywhere it's going to stay still now what you learn in the course when you do take the motorcycle safety uh, program you're going to learn that you really just want to learn how to drive in the friction zone now what the friction zone is what I just did right now I held down the clutch lever on my gear pattern over here I clicked down so we are not in neutral anymore we are in first what they teach you is how to ride in the friction zone and some people call it other things but that's what I was taught and what the friction zone is is once you get to a certain point on your lever you're gonna see that I'm gonna start rolling Kind of like letting go of the brakes on an automatic car. So now you're like, all right, Mike, so it's actually really easy to start moving, isn't it? So as you can see, I'm rolling back now. Now, depending on what kind of surface you're on, it makes a huge difference for a motorcycle. Since I am kind of in a hill where the back of my tire is kind of on a hill, as I let go of this, I'm not really going to move forward. The bike is trying to pull me, but if I completely let go and exceed this portion, I stall out. There was no momentum in the engine to push it from gear one to moving forward. What we do when your bike is not in neutral and it stalls out, you got to hold down the clutch once again. You roll back because it allows the bike to move either in any direction. You then over here hit your electric starter and boom, you start it up again. Checking my lefts and right. There is this big ass B in my windshield, so I'm gonna pull away real quick. This freaking B is following me. What the hell? Alright, 
got rid of the bee that was chasing me. So I'm more in flight ground now. So again, we're gonna go into the friction zone. And the friction zone is a spot in between positions th two and four is what I was uh, taught in my course. So for example, this is position one, my hand holding the clutch all the way. This is two slightly, three and four. And once I get to that four, my bike starts rolling on itself and I could walk with it. Now, once it starts picking up speed on its own, on flat ground, it's not going to stall out like there. I applied no throttle, no gas whatsoever, and it took off. Now, that is not the case on every single riding surface. That will not happen that much, to be honest with you. And, and when it does happen, as you just saw right there, it takes a lot of time. It's a very slow start. So what you want to learn how to do, after I get back into my starting position, let's come around the band, hold clutch as you want to come to a stop. What you want to learn how to do and what they, for the most part, teach you in the course is learn that as you're letting go of this, it's kind of like twisting a towel. This hand is going this way to twist the towel and this way is going that way. And to make it easier with actual hand motions. So when you're squeezing a towel, this one goes this way and this one goes that way. So that's kind of what you want to do with a motorcycle. The throttle comes back, clutch gets let go, which is in this sense, tightening up the towel. So in neutral again, you're gonna hold down the clutch, gonna kick down my, my thing down there. So now I'm in first, doesn't tell you what gears you're in, you just gotta know. You gotta be very aware when you're on one of these. The thing that I want you to learn how to do, and when you do get a bike, is just practice this. First, let's go back into neutral. Learn about your throttle, right? Like learn that this is how much you know power you're giving it. You're at 2,000 RPMs. Understand like halfway, understand what full way is and whatnot. And that's something that you really need to know because obviously on a car, you're with your foot and you're so used to this that your hand has no muscle memory about how to actually pull a throttle back. It's something new that your body has to learn. Once you practice that and the bike can be completely off, it doesn't have to be on like mine is right now. So you don't have to create that noise and you could just learn how to slowly control the throttle on your own. What I want everyone to learn how to do is once you are in gear one, you could throw back your throttle. I'm not saying throw it all the way back, but you could slightly pull it like I'm about to do. You're going to hear the engine rev. So that's the engine revving, right? You could slightly do that and just apply the tiniest amount and let go of your clutch and just walk with the bike. And then when you let go of the clutch, boom, you start moving. And it's a lot quicker than just going from clutch to no throttle, leaving the friction zone, and having the bike move. And so we're gonna do that again. So all you gotta practice is know that you are actually pulling the throttle back nice and slightly, just like I'm doing, engines revving. You slowly let go of the clutch, you'll start feeling it move, you start feeling it, and then you just let go of it. And boom, you're moving a lot quicker and then when you try to escape the friction zone without giving it any throttle, as you can see, my feet are hanging. It does not really matter which way you do it. You don't ever have to place your feet up, kind of just keep them forward, just so you kind of get the experience and the muscle memory in your hands to know what to do. Again, you could, you could put it in the friction zone right here. The bike wants to pull away from me. Start applying it like glass, and then when you let go of the clutch, boom, you take off. Now let's make it a little Yui. Again, you're gonna see that I'm in downhill, so when I let go, it's trying to pull away. With this light throttle. And then you start taking off. And never leave gear one, because all you're doing is learning how to go from stop to go, stop, to go. You stop once again. You see, you know, your local neighbors driving by saying, what the hell is this dude doing? And I have a racing clutch, so my racing clutch hurts the shit out of my hand, to be honest with you. My, my left forearm's going to be massive pretty soon because of how much stress holding this lever actually is. So again, slightly let go of the lever, the clutch. It's in the zone where you can tell it's trying to switch gears and then just apply a slight, slight throttle. 
and then let go of it while still applying the throttle nice and slowly and just like that you'll start moving on your motorcycle so that is something I do want everyone to understand that is how you make a bike go from stop to go if I knew that it would have been a lot easier for me and you might ask why is that easy for you then Mike knowing that because the way that I always approached it was that I had to do this and I will show you exactly what I mean the way I approach it, I'm gonna stall right here, is that I had to let go of the clutch and in that moment of it's pulling and I let go, I had to time it perfectly with throttle. That was what was going through my head and that is not the case. The case is, just like I just showed you, is that you slightly let go, you get into positions three and four where you can tell the bike kinda of wants to start moving and then you just start applying that gas. And even though you're still holding down the clutch, you take off you slightly feel it get ready to take off and then at that point when you know that the throttle is going to take your bike away and you're gonna go from not moving to moving that is when you then want to let go of the clutch and you can do it slowly it doesn't have to be a fast shift whatsoever as you see me doing it I'm not doing it fast where I super release it quickly all I do is I put it in that position where I feel the bike wants to start rolling and you can tell what point it is because if you try to roll back you feel that it's fighting you so in that position and then you just start giving it the gas like I said nice and light it's only 2,000 rpms and just boom like that you're going so the main thing just get the muscle memory down in your right hand of pulling back the throttle learning how to hold the clutch down and releasing it into that friction zone and then boom you should never have to worry about stalling ever again now a good learning spot for this technique is a hill as you see our driver is kind of slanted so when i do let go of the clutch when i get to that position like i could tell it wants to go somewhere but it's not getting power from the rear wheel which is what the throttle does to be able to push it up so when i let go it rolls right back down it doesn't have enough power to go up so this is a good spot because this is where you can learn how to how much like throttle you actually need to rev so i'm in that zone right now i'm applying this i'm slowly letting go and boom you take off and when you're on a hill you will notice that you kind of go through this sound and you're gonna you're gonna hear it and that's the part where you have to make sure that you do have throttle in because if you don't then you will stall even though you did just move like I did right there again slightly release the clutch find that sweet spot start giving it some gas you're gonna start taking off like we are right here and then boom don't hit your garage and you're done. You've now learned how to avoid stalling.